That's affirmative, Lieutenant. We're in position. Perfect. Nobody moves until I give this signal. Is that clear? We nail him as soon as he sets foot outside. Right, Lieutenant. Lucky that patrol spotted his car. What's he doing in there? Beats me. You're the profiler, right? I thought you were supposed to be right inside the killer's head. Well, that's just it. What I know of Ethan Mars doesn't match the killer's psychological profile. I know what the jury's gonna choose between your theories and concrete proof. What the fuck is that girl doing there? If Marge comes out now, she's gonna be in trouble. What do we do, Lieutenant? Wanna get her out? No, stand down. The police. They staked out the building where Ethan is. She's going inside. Maybe she lives there. Oh, it's just as well. We don't want anyone hanging around if Mars comes out. Ethan, what happened? The police. They're out there. I think they're here to arrest you. We've got to find another way out. What's he up to in there? Wait for a go on my word. Ready on my go. Stay here, Jaden. Out of the question. I'm coming with you. Two men at the door hold your positions. It's a go. On our ass. There's a man and a woman. No way out. out. A woman? Shit. It's that girl who went in. Everybody downstairs. They're in the alley. Follow them. The subway. Jeez. He's half out of it. A dead weight. I won't be able to carry him for long. Shit. They spotted us. We need to move while we still have a chance. What the hell am I doing? Helping a fugitive escape. I must be completely out of my mind. Can't give up now. There's still a chance we can get through this. Ethan, what's the matter? We've got to keep going. Ethan! Ethan! 
They're everywhere. They're trying to corner us. The crowd. They might lose us in the crowd. Ethan's going downhill fast. He seems to be having trouble breathing. Abandon Ethan now. There's got to be a way. Less than an hour ago, we heard from the police who have identified the man thought to be the origami killer. Ethan Mars, father of the kidnapped victim Sean Mars, is on the run and should be considered armed and dangerous. A police manhunt is now underway, and they hope that they will soon be able to announce the apprehension of this dangerous lunatic. I brought some food. I didn't know what you like, so I brought some of everything. I, I hope that's okay. Why are you helping me, Madison? You know nothing about me. You could have been killed. I don't know. I guess it just seemed like the right thing to do at the time. You needed help. I helped you. You're all over the news reports, Ethan. Every cop in the country will be hunting you. They say you're the origami killer. Is it true? Are you the killer, Ethan? I... I sometimes have these blackouts. Times where I don't know what I'm doing. As if I'm... someone completely different. The only thing I remember afterwards... is the bodies. The bodies in the water. Why are you hurt, Ethan? Why were you in that apartment? I think my other self is testing me, testing my love for Sean. He wants to know if I'd love my son enough to save him. That means there's some part of me that knows where Sean is. But the only way to find him is to go through these trials. Why can't you tell that to the police? <laughs> and tell them what? That I'm a schizophrenic who drowns his victims and has kidnapped his own son? They'd never let me go, and I have to stay free to save Sean. I have no choice. I'm his only chance. When Sean is out of danger, 
I'll turn myself in, but not until then. You can't keep going like this. You're destroying yourself, Ethan. Finding Sean is the only thing that matters. There has to be another way. You don't understand. Time is running out. Sean will be dead in a few hours. I have no choice! Please, Madison. Leave. Forget everything that's happened. There is nothing more you can do for me. If you want to help me, leave. Leave me to do this on my own. I don't have much time. I've got to find my son before it's too late. The box. I have to open another origami figure. I'll find you, Sean. I swear I'll find you. Your vodka, sir. Thanks. You look preoccupied, if you don't mind my saying so. Problems with the investigation? Blake is convinced that Mars is the killer. Not you. I thought there was some evidence to that effect. That's true. But it just doesn't make sense. His psychological profile doesn't fit. Neither does the geolocalization. I can't see this father drowning eight victims before kidnapping his own kid. Mars is not the origami killer. I'd stake my life on it. Then who is? I haven't the faintest fucking idea. Maybe you should review the evidence in your possession. That's just what I was thinking of doing. Oh, one last thing, sir. You should be careful not to overindulge in you know what. It can be dangerous. Very dangerous. I'm trying to keep a handle on it, but that's difficult. 
It gets more and more difficult. It'll end up killing you if you're not careful. That would be most unfortunate, sir. Well, well. Looks like there's something new. The video recording from near the park on the afternoon Sean Mars disappeared. I doubt there's anything on it, but you never know. A Chevrolet model corresponding to the tire prints passed at 1602 heading for the park when in the opposite direction at 1637, that could fit the time that Sean Mars disappeared. Could it be the killer's car? Ah, pity we can't see the driver's face. was stolen. Let's see, a certain Jackson Neville was suspected of stealing it, but the charges were dropped. Not enough evidence. Jackson Neville, a.k.a. Mad Jack, involved in several cases of buying and selling stolen vehicles. Considered to be very dangerous. This guy might have provided the killer with a car. It's a pretty slim lead, but it's all I have right now. One last thing, sir. You should be careful not to overindulge in you no know what. It can be dangerous. Very dangerous. Shit. It's... It's coming. Tryptocaine. The tube is on the bedside table. All I need is to take some, and the pain will go away. I should resist. This is gonna kill me. I know I can resist, I just need to stay in control and, and do something until it goes away. Manfred! Manfred! Anybody home?
Nothing much changed here. Just the dust and the clocks ticking on and on. Hi there, Manfred. Who is it? Scott. Scott Shelby. Do you remember me? S Scott? This is Scott! Oh, yes, of course. Well, good to see you. How long has it been? Oh, about ten years, I guess. Oh, at my age, time means nothing anymore. I, I repair clocks, but I try to forget about time. Well, how about you? Are you still with the police? Oh, no, I quit. I'm a private investigator now. Uh, this is Lauren. She's a, she's a friend. Hello. Oh, hello, young lady. Well, this, this calls for a celebration. I'm just a thing. Wait there. I, I'm sure I, I saw a, a bottle of scotch around here somewhere. Nice to see Manfred again. Just like old times. Do an old man a favor, would you, Scott? Tell him to call back this afternoon. Sure, no problem. Hello? Yeah, this is Manfred's. He's not available right now. Could you call back later this afternoon? Thanks. Well. To old friends. <sighs> Do you like it? Yes, it's beautiful. It's a Stradelli. Crafted in Venice in the 18th century. Mm. It's one of my favorite pieces. Tell me, Scott. What brings you back after all these years? I'd like you to have a look at an envelope. I thought maybe you could tell me about the typewriter that was used to type the address on it. Well, well let's have a look. Now, could you pass me the uh, magnifying glass from behind the counter, Oh, sure, please? I'll get it. My eyes are beginning to fail me. Thanks. Now well, let's see what this envelope has to say for itself. Hmm. The Royal Five. And yes, the shape of the T's and the F's is typical of that model. Produced between 1907 and 1924. Yes. No doubt about it. It's a Royal Five. These typewriters, are they rare? No, no, they're fairly common. I'd say many folks have one gathering dust in an attic or in their cellar. Are there many places around that could prepare one of these? I bought the company's entire stock of spare parts for a song in uh, 64. Well, they were going to take them to the dumpster, so I got the lot. <laughs> well, anybody around here who 
has one that actually works has been to see me at one time or another. Do you keep a record of all your clients? Oh, yes, indeed. Well, at least the ones who pay. <laughs> Any chance I could get a peek at that? Well, yes, of course. I keep my account books in the office. Uh, if you're not in a hurry, I have a list of all the clients who ever bought a Royal Five or, or had one repaired. Yeah, that would really help us out. Hmm. Delighted to help. Give me two minutes, and I'll be right back with the list. You think the killer's been here? If he has a 1920s typewriter, he may have needed Manfred's services to get it fixed. We'll know when we get the list. Killer's name might be in Manfred's paper. Hello? Manfred! Hello? Your call is lost, sir. A police car will be there in a few minutes. I need to know who you are, sir. Sir? Hello? Oh my god! He's dead. Oh god. Poor old man. What are you doing? I'm calling the police. The killer has already called the police. I think he wants us to be a scapegoat. We gotta get the hell out of here. What do you mean? We have nothing to do with his death. We were just here when it happened. Look, we're running out of time to find Sean Mars. The last thing we need is 24 hours in a police station explaining this whole thing. Well, so what do we do? Watch the front door. I'll get rid of our fingerprints from everything we've touched since we came in. We better work fast. The police are going to be here any minute. Get to clean Lauren's prints too. Don't want her to be mixed up in this. God, Where did we leave Prince? Much longer? God, the police will be here any second. I'm almost finished. That's it. We're done. You get all the prints? I got what I got. It should be enough to prevent them from fighting us. Come on, let's go. Thank you. 
keep going. I'm taking you home. This is getting way too dangerous. No way. We were partners, remember? We had a deal. This isn't a game, Lauren. Manfred was murdered because he knew the identity of the killer. He was ten feet away, for Christ's sake. No. I can't take a chance on the killer getting that close to me. I'm not a child. I know what I have to do. I've got to find my sense of killer. You're not going to stop me. You're going to be a good girl. You're going to go home and let me get on with my investigation. It's all my fault. I should never have let her come with me. I can't just leave her like that. She'd do anything to find the guy who killed her son. Crap, I have no choice. I guess I'm doing this to protect her. This girl's stubborn as a mule. She doesn't let up, with or without me. Such an idiot. I better catch up with her. to hold him once again in my arms. I'm sorry. I, I shouldn't have talked to you like that. It's just that I wouldn't want to see you get hurt. What do you want? Oh, fuck it. I said a thousand times that I don't want any junkies at my door. If you want to screw... Hey! Take it easy, man. Huh? Keep cool. <laughs> what do you want? Dope? Money? Tell me what you need. You sure we can make a deal, huh? I'm gonna blow your brains out, you son of a bitch! You think you can come into my house and steal my dog? You'd be shooting up in hell, motherfucker! Will you stop fucking moving?
hold it, man. I give you whatever you want. Got dope? I got cash? You, you want some dope? Please. Please don't kill me, man. I got children. These my girls, see? This one's Sarah. And a little one. That's Cindy. Please, man. I want to see them again. Please. Please don't shoot. <laughs> I'm a father, too. But I have no choice. Matt, it's Sam. I got your information. And the owner of the apartment in Marble Street is a Dr. Adrian Baker. He's a struck-off surgeon. He used to sell drugs to junkies on the quad. He made some cash and bought up some cheap-ass apartments, including the one in Marble Street. Of course, he got caught. He did a few months in prison and was struck off the medical register. Interesting. Thanks for the information, Sam. I owe you one. Hey, Matt. Be careful, okay? I'm on it. Talk to you later. The owner of the apartment where Ethan cut off his finger lives here. It's not much of a lead, but it's all I've got. I'm gonna act all doped up. I hope he goes for the bait. Gotta find some way to get him to talk about the Marble Street apartment. Hi. Uh, I was told that you could get Betropin. Without a prescription. Sorry, you were misinformed. Goodbye. Hold on. I, I, I really need your help here. I can pay. Well, why didn't you say so? Please, come in. So, you're looking for Betropin, my dear? Are you having trouble sleeping? How much do you need? 
I don't know, um, about three, four boxes. Well, no, that shouldn't be a problem. Would you like a drink? I was just about to have one. No, thanks. Well, alcohol helps take the edge off the pills, don't you think? Anyway, we should drink a toast to our first deal. I haven't seen you around here before. Who told you about me? I can't remember. My brain's fried with all these pills. Can't tell Dave from night half the time. Can you get other types of medicine? Everything has a price, my dear. What about you? Do you have a price? Forget it. I'm not for sale. I heard you had some apartments for rent. I'm looking. Sorry, darling. Those are all booked up. Shame. I was looking for something around Marble Street. You're not drinking? I am, um, I'm, I'm not really thirsty. I'll get your prescription. Won't be a moment. Wait here. That guy gives me the creeps. I better take a look around to see if I can find anything before he gets back. Doc seems to be interested in property, amongst other things. Quick! I gotta find something. He seemed to be upset that I wouldn't drink. I get the feeling I did the right thing. Could the doc be the origami killer? There's something about the way he looks. Don't make a sound. He's near. Maybe a quick look behind those doors. I'll make up some lies. Looks like he retired a bunch of medical supplies on his way out. There's enough sleeping pills here to knock out an army. Surgical gowns? I thought he stopped performing operations. Must be some kind of a weird nostalgia for the past.
nosy little ferret. We're gonna have some fun together, my darling. I promise. <laughs> Say hello to Matthew. He claimed he had come to the census. Another one of those goddamn government spies. So, you're interested in my Marble Street apartment. I rent it to my friend Paco, if you must know. I have no idea what he does there. Maybe that's where he fornicates with his dancers from the Blue Lagoon. <laughs> To be honest, I don't give a damn, because as long as he pays his rent, he can do whatever he likes. But enough with the chit-chat. I miss surgery, you see, so I take every opportunity to practice. I don't have any instruments here, so I use whatever comes to hand. I hope you won't hold that against me. Hold up. Is my stinger. <laughs> Have you ever noticed? As soon as you start to do a little housework, someone always comes calling. I'll get rid of our visitor and be right back. Don't move. I won't be long.
Mad Jack is suspected of stealing the car I'm looking for. Might be worth asking him a few questions. 24 hours. I've got less than 24 hours if I want to find Sean Mars still alive. Got them rain. Soaking wet. Can you stop that thing? Nam and Jaden, FBI. Can we talk for a minute? I'm listening. Can we go inside? Feeling sick. Got the sweats. Hands are shaking. Hope this works out all right. Mad Jack, a.k.a. Jackson Neville. This guy's got a criminal record as long as my arm. Better be careful. This is one fucked up sort of place. I'll question Neville and get the hell out of here. Jeez, won't this rain ever let up? I won't be coming here on vacation. That's for goddamn sure. Blake wasn't in the office when I left. Don't think I'm gonna miss him. A scrapyard. Good a place as any to tinker with stolen cars. Cuba trips came. Got it in my pocket. I'm looking for the owner of a blue Chevrolet Malibu 83. I don't give a damn how the car got here, or whether you stole it or not. I just want to know who bought it from me. Sorry, ma'am. Don't ring a bell. I got a real bad memory for me. Perhaps I can help you to remember. If we find out that you sold the car to the man we're looking for, you're looking at some pretty solid time inside, Jackie boy. You trying to scare me with your big talk? I never saw your damn car. Now take a walk. their blood here. on your head, pig. I ain't got time to be playing around with you. Let's just get you out of sight and finish you off. around. Now you're gonna tell me about the man with the blue car. Go fuck yourself in the ass. I've no time to lose, Jack. I want to know who that car belongs to. Well, what you want don't mean shit to me. I ain't no snitch. You better just lock me up now, boy. Do you like fireworks, Jack? Cause I bet them gas tanks are gonna blow up real nice. Shit, man, don't mess with the gasoline. Well, just say it was an accident. Or rather, I'll say it was an accident, cause you won't really be able to talk, will you, Jack? You crazy motherfucker, you out of your mind, man! No, I don't know nothing about the guy. He wanted me to get rid of his dirty car, get him a new one with false plates. He paid cash, and I ain't the questioning kind. Said I was 
supposed to drop the word to a guy named Paco down at the Blue Lagoon when the car was done. Now that's all I know. We'll continue this discussion down at the station. You're under arrest. You have the right to remain silent. Anything... Shit, not now. Anything you say can and will be... Me? <laughs> you look like you got a problem, man. Heads in the FBI now? God bless America. <laughs> now I'm gonna give you a little help with your drug problem, Mr. Five-O. Permanently. Nice! 